Can you say that on the air? What? Those words that were just up on Sweet the screen. Sweet patootie? Yeah. <laughs> of course you could say it on the air. I thought that was uh, some parts of Virginia. I didn't think that was legal. No, no. She has no part <laughs> that I'm aware of named patootie. <laughs> well, hi. I'm Larry Bly. And I'm Laban Johnson. We're so glad to see you, that you could drop in and be with us this Look at this, Doris, Doris Ford has run up all these fine cookies. Didn't have anything else and to do. And we've just been, just don't they look good? Hand picking them And they up. taste good, too. <laughs> good heavens. <laughs> the man's an animal. <laughs> when it comes, she even supplied us with some fine, would you like a little, mm -hmm. little milk with your uh, cookie there, Johnson? Oh, thank uh, you. A uh, little more healthful one he normally drinks at home. He well, drinks chocolate milk uh, at home. <laughs> I haven't had chocolate milk for a long time. When was the last time you had a glass of chocolate milk? I was milk? in the sixth grade. That was approximately 1934 or something like that, I believe. Oh, I thought you were going to say 19 ago. or 20 years ago. No. You were going to throw off on you no, big time. <laughs> no, and you're not going to get me to do that. Dear sirs, these are the letters in case you couldn't figure that out. Please send me your recipe for chicken livers and noodles and zucchini and omelet and present it on your show. Did we do all that on one show? I think we did. It gives a show number, thank heavens. It says your programming is relatively good. <laughs> no, it says relatively new, actually, and we enjoy it very much. And if available, please send us a listing of your various other recipes so that we may catch up with the rest of the United States of America. Well, that would take two ups people and a rather large truss in order to get all that to you because we've been doing this show for eight years. A long, long time. time. That's several hundred recipes, but hopefully sometime in the not so distant uh, future you'll be yes. able to get them all in book form. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley Kanzanovich of El Dorado, Arkansas. Do you realize, Bly, that there are children out there now that are in the second grade that weren't alive when this show was on the air? We're not even born when this went on the air. That's right. And there are, there are at least a couple that weren't even born when we started working on the cookbook. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, here's one from Lucy Simpson of Midlothian, Virginia, and I was just down in your neck of the woods uh, several weeks ago, and uh, Lucy says, love your show. My husband, who is a terrific cook, also enjoys the show. Well, Lucy, we're so glad your husband is a terrific cook because, frankly, we've heard about your cooking, and we know that it's a good thing. He is a good cook. Well, Larry. that is true. Dear Laban and Larry, I enjoy your show very much, and I probably am old enough to be your mother. I thought she was. <laughs> I hadn't seen her for a while. And I was a cook for 20 years. And anyone that finds fault with what you boys do has never done much cooking. Just keep up the good work. And that's from Dana Curry of Lavaca, Arkansas. I believe that's how that's pronounced. Mm -hmm. A lot of people from Arkansas. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We're going to do desserts today. Mm. I'm going to do your water's boiling, Johnson. Oh, good. I'm going to do mincemeat bars. <laughs> I've done some bars in my time, but I've never done a mincemeat bar. That's no, the only I one I haven't know. been in recently. And I'm doing plump molasses cookies. And right here, well, how they, appropriate that is. And right here they are. Fat molasses cookies. I'm going to put them right in the oven right now. And Wonderful. we'll see what happens. We'll see if this well, oven... Well, how could he be putting them in the oven? He hasn't even made them yet. Well, it's a miracle, miracle of TV. Of TV. <laughs> All right. Do you want to start? You want me to start? Well, let me just start. I'm, this is something oh, look everybody... At this this has never happened on this right. show before. The battle ah, of ah, the mixers. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> it, no. Um, no, I'm going to start on this show. with a stick of margarine, which is a half a cup of sugar. Johnson and I'm going and to Hamilton Beach looks like the original. It was Mr. Hamilton and Mr. Beach. I, it's, it's, they had just met when they built this thing. This is a half a cup of sugar. That's what they were still speaking. <laughs> so I've got to cream That's this up. a nice up. bowl. Is that a cooking cheap bowl or is that one you brought from home? It's one I found. It was just laying around in here. Might belong to those other chumps that work over here sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about time we use some of their stuff. That would be a switch. I just saw it. Well, never mind. <laughs> anyway, you have to cream this uh, <laughs> butter and sugar together. And I mean, everybody in the world knows how to do this. But you want to make sure you get it done real good. And let's see. Now, after that is all beat up real fluffy and nice, then you're going to add 
an egg to it. To it. So let me. Why isn't there three quarters on this thing? What? Someone has purposely and maliciously marked off the three quarter no, mark on this. No, it's over on this side. See, that's the thirds oh. over there, and that's the. How oh, humiliating. Square. Well, I can only look at one side at a time. Well, we've noticed that. I've looked at sight life from both sides now. Uh, you and Judy Collins and several other people. Mm. Did a story on her yesterday. I on saw TV. that. Did you see that? that? I, I thought she was dead. Fun. She's not. At least she didn't look like it. Well, now, I've added my egg, and then I'm going to add a cup of, and let me show everybody this stuff, and then I'll let you get to it. Uh, I'm going to add a cup of dark, unsulfured molasses. Now, there's several fine brands of this out on the market, but make sure you get the dark, unsulfured. Don't get any cheap imitations. Uh, there's Brer Rabbit. That's another uh, kind that's of good. molasses. That is. Turn there there it away. is. Pull that We're camera. not particularly That's endorsing. Camera. Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> We're not particularly endorsing this particular brand of molasses. It just happens to be what we can get at our local store. And yeah, and I'm going to put a cup of molasses in it. Now, ain't nobody fool enough to measure a cup of molasses because you'll never get it out of the cup. So you look on here. A cup is eight ounces. This has got 12 in it. That means you want two thirds of this jar of molasses. Good heavens. Could we have an instant replay on that? That was amazing, Johnson. <laughs> Culinary. Are you sure? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe where you come from, you don't use molasses, but here in the South, it is one of our fine You know what we used it for up where I came from? Oh, we put it on pancakes and waffles and... What'd you put it on? Your bed? We put king syrup on that. We put it on, on straw for cows to eat. Oh, so they'd eat it better. Uh huh. That's true. We get it mm -hmm. by the barrel. You could smell that stuff for miles, but I never ate any of it. Mm -hmm. Well, boy, we did at home because we liked it a lot. Put molasses on, on homemade bread. I know you're a little heavy up. handed on it in the baked beans. I have noticed uh -huh. that. Uh huh, yes. I do like I'm very fond of molasses. Now, Larry, you can go on because I've got to mix this around and then put together my dry ingredients, and that'll take half of the afternoon. Do you have to diddle it around? All right, I got some good news and some bad news. Oh, no. The good news is you put a cup and a three quarters of finely sifted flour. I'm using some flour made expressly for. I'm still using this old bag. We've been using this all season. I don't think it's ever going to get gone. It's all purpose to white, unbleached, no preservative agent, and it's for breads, cakes, and pastries, and it's milled a little finer than some of the other stuff. Now that's, that's one thing. Now the good news is that this recipe calls for a cup of shortening. Unfortunately, in my recipe uh, directions, it never ever refers to the shortening ever again oh, after no. it's listed the first time. And you will see later on why <laughs> you should remember to put the shortening in this mess. So we're going to start with a cup of that, and you can guesstimate it, or you can guesstimate it. It doesn't matter which. I've decided I'm going to guesstimate it. I'm using some of that buttery stuff. So the first thing I'd suggest you do is cut that into your flour, like so. <laughs> now you know this isn't helping my emphysema any. Now you could do this by hand your if you wanted to. Your emphysema? Well, Who whatever is it is that I've had for a couple of oh, days. Oh, I thought it, you said your emphysema. <laughs> that I've been taking all that drugs for. I didn't know y'all ever you know talked I've about her drugs. anymore since she got caught with that. Now this looks much better than what I started with yesterday. Shut up, Doris. <laughs> She's already having a good time with me. See, I got to this point yesterday, and I kept saying, this stuff is too dry to do anything with. There's something wrong with it. You sound like Oral Roberts when you said Dry, but dry. I went on. Yes, I did. Uh, and I persevered, and it just got worse. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see the results of that in a little bit. And then you add in a cup of brown sugar. Well, at this point, you combine, uh, oh, rolled oats. I forgot about that. Now, rolled oats, in case you don't know what it is, 
was just ordinary old uncooked Quaker oats and not instant either, the real stuff. This is the stuff that mama used to make and then she got real disgusted and stopped making it and I don't blame her. I hate this stuff. Oh, nothing personal with the Quaker people. I love a lot of their products, but I have never liked this stuff. I've told you about that, haven't I? About how my family made me eat oats one morning. Fresh Quaker oat, oatmeal. And then after they got finished cleaning everything up, they never ever forced me to eat anything again. It was a terrible experience for all of us. Can I work on this over here for oh, a minute? Oh, please, go right ahead. Well, now I've got I three and a half something. cups of flour in my little sifter, and I'm going to add a, a teaspoon of cinnamon. This is a half a teaspoon measure I'm using. And three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cloves, and I'm just crazy about cloves. And cloves is crazy about you. And sugar, uh, much a half a teaspoon of gin ground ginger. And no, you don't want to uh, grate up your ginger root in here. There's your ginger. These cookies are real powerful. And two teaspoons of baking soda. And that goes right down in here. Oof. I had something that I thought was butter on my finger, but it wasn't. Oh, you got... Uh, Oh, Lord, well, wonder what it was. Leave me alone, Hutch. Well, I don't know, but it's off now. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got all that, and I'm going to sift that right on down into... Well, isn't that a pretty presentation? Uh-huh. I don't use sifters. I don't well, know why. I, rarely, I just hate them. Well, I rarely do it either, but, you know, I, I had some flour. Now, not this flour. I was using some other flour at home that was a, a southern brand and it didn't say pre-sifted and I went on and sifted to see what it was like and there were some lumps in it. Hmm. Now if your flour says pre-sifted you don't really need to do it again, it's not necessary. But uh, now this is where, it, this is going to get real, this is a stiff batter. Well this, oh look at this, this has got some lumps in it Larry. Look right there. Them's the lumps. Yes, here are the lumps, right here. It's true. It did. Big old mean looking lumps. All right, now here's my sifted flour and I'm going to start adding it to this mixture. But first I've got to have some lemon juice, about a tablespoonful of lemon juice in this. And so why not have mm. some fresh. This looks good. It really does. <clears throat> Look fabulous. That ought to be enough. Well, Lord. Did you see me do that? He's getting me back for last week when I ser served him six of those seeds. Get out of there. All right. Oh, my hand's going to smell real lemony. Now, Laban, how Lay brown are these supposed to get on the bottom? Oh, I forgot all about them. H how long have they been in there, Doris? Okay, well, they're ready, and they have not no, burned. No, they, they look just oh, right. Thank goodness. I would have been humiliated. <sighs> All right, now, the, the hardest thing about this recipe is handling this mixer and adding the flour at the same time, but I believe I can do it. So, Larry, that's, I'm just going to be adding flour now, so if you want to go ahead with whatever it is you're doing, you're certainly welcome to. <laughs> All right, now what do we got in here? We got our shortening and our flour, and I just added all that two cups of rolled wheat, and now we're gonna take a cup of brown sugar and add that in there, and a half a teaspoon of baking soda, just a little bit. Excuse me, just a second. I'm not gonna use that again, I promise you. <laughs> Wipe that off. Now, we're gonna mix that all around real good and that's going to take a little bit because this sugar has got lumps in it too bad you can't sh sift the sugar and you're going to mix that all around real good oh this looks so much better than it did yesterday it really is so much more workable with all that shortening in there I can tell this is going to be much better too bad we're not going to get to eat it because we're kind of stuck with what I already have, which is just a tad little on the dry side. Now what you do is you need to 
pre-butter a pan. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Just take a little stick of butter and just run it around in there. Whoops. On the sides and around on them. That's the way I do it. I don't mess around with this stuff. Who has time? All right. And what you do now is you take half of this, roughly, and you pour it down into the bottom of this. You may want to use just a slightly smaller sized container so that it'll be a little thicker. I'm, I'm kind of getting it a little thin, but this is the only pan I had. And what you want to do at this point is smush it down inside the pan. Well, that's something that worked yesterday that didn't work today. All right, there we go. It's sort of. Well, Larry, while you're doing, right. let me, I have to do this step right here. The dough has gotten impossible to work with this mixer, so this is where you add a, a third of a cup of boiling water to it, and that will help you to work this mixture a little easier. Well, I'm sort of filling in the holes here with my bare hands because I don't know what else to do with it. What you need to do is smush that all down real good across the bottom of the pan. And you got to save roughly half of it for the top. And then the next thing you do is you get yourself some mincemeat. And I got just some, you can buy it in the store. It's a little pricey, I thought. Next thing you ought to do is get your hands dry so you can open a darn thing. All right. And you just kind of take a spoon, which I'll have to go get because I dropped. Oh, here, I can use this one. And just kind of dribble it around on here and until you get it pretty much covered all across the board on it. And you may need to smash it around a little bit. And this part takes a little time and a little bit of patience. And as soon as I get that all done, then we'll put the top on it. And I'll show you what else to do. Now back to Laban. Well, now here is my dough, and I forgot to put just a tad of salt into it. Um, and you are not ready yet at this point to make these cookies because this batter, which as you can see is, is fairly, it's a stiff batter, needs to set in the refrigerator and thoroughly chill like overnight. And when that's done, what you have left is a real dark and a very stiff cookie dough like this. And you bake those in a 350 degree oven for eight to 10 minutes and you get plump molasses cookies and we'll show those to you in just a few minutes. So basically, that's the kind of cookie you've got. And they are drop cookies. Now what I'm gonna do now is put the uh, this dough on back down in this uh, pan here so that I will have it to take home and enjoy, but uh, we'll see our cookies here just a little bit. Larry? All righty. I'm continuing to put this. You can take a look at that. You can see that I'm just sort of spreading this stuff out. This calls for one and a half cups of minced meat. And you can make it as thick as you want to or use up what you have. You can really kind of play around with it at this point and just kind of, you know, you don't have to cover every square inch of this. <clears throat> the more that you do, the better the chance that you will get a nice, square that has something in it. And that's always real good. Why don't we look at our recipe while I continue this mess. Oh yes, the mincemeat bars. I guess I called for it. Two cups of rolled oats, one cup of brown sugar, one and three quarters cup sifted flour, one cup of shortening, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half cups of mincemeat. And uh, the plump molasses cookies. You need a half a cup of shortening, a half a cup of sugar, one egg, one cup of dark molasses, a tablespoon of lemon juice, three and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of cinnamon, three quarters of a teaspoon ground cloves, half of a teaspoon of ginger, two teaspoons of baking soda, one half teaspoon of salt, and a third of a cup of boiling hot, fiery hot water. And you mix all those together to get a delicious, scrumptious cookie batter. All right, had I not spread this over such a long area, this would have gone all the way, but I'll, I just did half of it so you can well, see what it looks like. Just I, don't pay any attention to this side of it at all. There, you know, isn't that beautiful? We don't now, want what to you talk do, about going all the way. <laughs> 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 
Preheat the oven to 350 degrees and you'll bake that for 40 minutes. Let it cool and then cut it into little squares. And, and when you do, it just turns out real darling. Well, let me take my advice. It's just real nice. And these cookies have just done Look famously. Look at these. Uh, oh, aren't, aren't they, they just uh, real unusual? Uh, crumbly and real uh, oh. strange and, and bizarre when you don't use the shortening. They just kind of like fall to pieces. Oh, I can you hardly wait to get what my they lips do. Upon Oh, those. yes, they're real. It's like eating globs of mincemeat with a little something dust on it. All right. Anyway. But these would have been just right. Just much better. I'm going to take those home and I'm going to bake those. So anyway, did we need to, well, I don't oh. guess we did, did we? Did no. We? Oh, we don't? Mm -hmm. All right. We don't really. I didn't know whether I saw a witch or not. I just well, uh, some, if there were so many last week. I'm still, I, I still well, got witches on the brain. She's uh, just overcome with things. Is she really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Just completely blowed well, out. What are we doing now? I think we'll go over and have oh. these cookies and some milk. <laughs> so confused. I think they're going on somebody else's show at this point. Now, well, that'd be all right. Now, let's <laughs> I'm going to give Laban a real nice big one. <laughs> The now, biggest you know mess. I have a feeling that I ought to add some more milk over here. Would you want some milk? Huh? No, that's greatest of plenty. Thank you. You don't drink milk? Not, not at uh, 4.30 in the afternoon, I don't. But thought I had something else in mind, perhaps a ginger ale or something. Oh, really? Well, yeah. let me try one of these. These are the hot ones that just came out. Uh-huh. Mm-mm. I like those. I'm good. They are good. Now, let me tell you about these cookies. There's, uh -uh. A, there's a story behind these cookies. How much time do we have? Do we have plenty of time to tell this story? We've got about a minute. My Aunt Leon, my dear, sadly lamented, gone on over now, Aunt Leon, used to make these cookies. And when I was a little boy, I wanted to make them too. So one afternoon, I sat down on the stool in the kitchen by the wood stove and she gave me the recipe for it, which I dutifully wrote out. Mm, dutifully. In my little uh, cursive handwriting. Mm. And I still have that recipe card at home. Mm. The sad thing is that I have never been able to duplicate her cookies. Oh. And the thing is, these things are delicious now. They're so tender and nice. But this time tomorrow, these <laughs> things will be Skeet made shoot. out of <laughs> cast iron. <laughs> We're talking about the toughest cookies in the history of the entire world. Well, Laban, why don't you uh, give one of these uh, marvelous uh, <clears throat> things uh, a try here? <laughs> a little dry. I have some milk. Maybe that'll help. I think it would. <laughs> wait, wait till that rolled oats in there starts spreading out on him in his stomach. <laughs> You'll have vapor I'll lock of the lower intestine before this program is over. You know what over. this reminds me of? What? Those little cookies, you know, that you get mashed out flat and they're real chewy and they got, you know. You That's know what, what I mean? happens when they go bad, <laughs> mm. but they're good otherwise. 